Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, today I want to talk about the top 10 ICD-10-CM coding errors. With so much emphasis being placed on CPT codes for reimbursement purposes, I'm often asked if as much emphasis should be put on ICD-10-CM diagnoses codes. And so the first thought that comes to mind for me is, what if the diagnosis does not justify the procedure? Would the ICD-10-CM diagnosis code be important in this case? And the answer is yes. So just as much importance should be placed on ICD-10-CM for diagnoses as CPT for the procedures. There's an excellent article in the June 2021 Healthcare Business Monthly uh, magazine on the top 10 ICD-10-CM coding errors by Dr. Stacy Chaplin. She identified the following coding errors, and she went from 10 back to 1. So she said, number 10, coding straight from the index, and she meant the alphabetic index. This is something, guys, that I teach my students from the very beginning of my classes. Never, ever code just from the alphabetic index. The tabular list has drawings, it has notes, it has additional directions that may not be seen in the alphabetic index. So never just code from your alphabetic index. Number nine, she said, sequence codes appropriately. And I think a lot of my students always worry, am I sequencing them correctly? And I think that the, the problem comes in is what, which diagnosis has more precedent over another? And so that can be kind of tricky. And I always say, she also stated that you code the underlying disease before the manifestation and then the injury before the e-code. And that's where, this is where I always say, know your coding guidelines. It depends on the diagnoses as to whether or not the manifestation is coded first and then the underlying disease. But she is correct when she says code the injury before the external cause codes. So the rule of thumb that I always teach my students is code them. Want, you, you have to put the principal diagnoses first. That's a given principal diagnoses, and then all of the others in order of resource intensive or in order of treatment at, while they're in your, your, at your visit, whether it's a hospital or a physician office, okay? Number eight says assign too few codes. If an underlying condition is a factor in the treatment, sequence it secondarily or in the order, again, designated by the classification or by the official coding guidelines. So again, if it is a manifestation of an underlying disease process, per our coding guidelines, we need to identify the underlying disease process. So make sure you're not assigning too few codes. Number seven, assigning too many codes. And that can be a problem too, because if a chronic condition isn't a part of today's treatment or care plan, it should not be reported. She went on to say that it should, however, be documented once per year for risk adjustment purposes. So I understand that part. But again, I use the example of my son with asthma. If I take my son in for fracturing his leg, and he's not in an asthmatic condition, then asthma does not need to be captured for today's visit because nothing was done with the asthma. That's a chronic condition the patient has that the, the thrust of treatment was not even geared toward. No treatment was actually given on that particular visit for a fractured leg for the asthma. Therefore, asthma should not be coded. Okay? Six, not looking beyond your code book guidelines. It says make sure you are coding from or based on the most current official ICD-10-CM codes. 
a lot of students will ask me, Coach, is it okay if I use a 2019 book? No. Coach, is it okay if I use a 2020? No. Make sure you're current with, with whatever, whichever classification you're using, whether it's ICD-10-CM or CPT or HCPCS, but make sure you have the most current edition code book so that you're assigning the correct codes. Coding of number five, coding of rule out diagnoses. For professional claims, if a test result is negative, do not code the suspected diagnoses. It wasn't confirmed, so you cannot code it. I know you want to do it to, it says, um, for the suspected diagnoses to justify the test. Well, the symptom codes that the doctor um, applied to even have the test perform justifies the test. It shows that he's suspected based on the signs or symptoms. So make sure on an outpatient basis, you cannot code rule out conditions. You can only code the suspected or the signs and symptoms correction, the signs and symptoms and not the suspected condition, especially if the test comes back negative, okay? Four, truncating codes. Oh my goodness. Make sure that if a condition it provides for details in the fourth and fifth digit, that you use them. A truncated code is an invalid code and it's the quickest road to a claim denial. Our code books today let us know expanded codes. So we must know how to read a code and determine if the code expands even as far as the seventh digit. And if it does expand to the seventh digit, then that code must be seven digits long or it's an invalid code. It's not acceptable. So make sure the alphabetic index usually gives you a little checkbox or a little line or a little X indicating, go to your tabular, look this code up and assign all of the necessary digits to the code. Okay, if the code expands to five digits, then the code must be five digits long. Three, settling in a code that is vaguely appropriate. Guys, do not settle for other and unspecified codes or even other specified unless you have exhausted the classification. If you can't find it anywhere else in the classification, then you can use the other specified or even other and unspecified code. But make sure to look for the code first to see if there is not a specific code for the condition at hand. Number two, letting time get away from you. Make sure that the code set and the guidelines that you are using are those for the date of service on the claim. I can remember when we transitioned from ICD-9 to ICD-10 on October 1 of 2015. I had coders that were coding in August, in October, going back and um, editing claims from August of 2015. Well, in August of 2015, we were still on ICD-9 CM, so I had to remind my coders, look at the date of your claim to make sure you're using the appropriate classification for that claim. And number one, thinking ICD-10-CM codes aren't money codes. Hopefully, from these top 10 down, reasons for using the appropriate ICD-10-CM code, you guys have learned that these codes, ICD-10 codes, can be money makers as well. If the codes are not correct, they're denied. If the codes are truncated and not expanded, all the way to the number of digits that that code requires, it's a denial. If the wrong codes are assigned or the sequencing is wrong, it's a denial. Denials cost money. What an excellent article that Dr. Um, Chaplin put together in this magazine. I loved it. Have you made any of these mistakes? Comment below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, Make sure to do that. We've got a journey ahead of us. Let's take this journey together. Okay, guys? Thanks. I'll see you in the next one.